In the previous unit, we showed you the square dance application, and uh, the square dance involved a very simple graphics image, a square, and uh, in fact, we used the operating system in order to draw this square. In many applications, you have to use some more fancy graphics, some less regular polygons than uh, squares and, uh, um, and, uh, and rectangles. So what do you do when, uh, when you have to create high-performance graphics? Well, you can do some tricks that uh, we're going to unfold in this unit. So we saw Square Dance, and um, you may have the chance to, uh, to look at the Space Invaders uh, app. Uh, you can look it up um, in the course uh, website. And uh, if you look closer at the images from which uh, Space Invaders is made, uh, you will see these uh, various uh, creatures here. So we see the alien and uh, the uh, shooter and uh, uh, the shots. Uh, if you look at another application, Sokoban, uh, once again, if you focus on the graphical building blocks of this application, you will see that uh, uh, this maze is uh, made up from uh, repeating patterns of uh, some basic uh, uh, images, as you see here uh, at the bottom. And uh, by and large, all these uh, images are typically referred to as sprites. So a sprite is a two-dimensional bitmap that uh, typically serves as uh, a, a singular uh, uh, image or a repeating image in a larger scene. And uh, as application developers, we have to worry about two things. First of all, how to draw sprites quickly, which is not obvious when the sprite is an irregular uh, uh, shape that does not lend itself to standard uh, drawing routines. And uh, in a similar fashion, we have to uh, worry about moving these sprites again, uh, around in a smooth and uh, uh, acceptable way uh, to the human eye, to, to the eye of the user. Now, there are two basic ways to do it. One is the standard approach, which uses the host uh, operating system. And yet, uh, at some point, the capabilities of the OS uh, can uh, kind of uh, uh, run out of steam. And then you have to use uh, some uh, customized code that you may want to develop uh, yourself. And that's what this uh, unit is all about, how to bypass the operating system and, uh, and do your graphics uh, uh, using your own, uh, your own skills. All right, so the graphics that you're going to create in Jack uh, at the end of the game is going to execute on the hack computer. And the hack computer, if you recall, features um, a 32K uh, RAM. And uh, as you may recall from uh, Project Zero, the computer is organized in such a way that there is an 8K uh, address space, which is dedicated to the screen memory map. And there's a single word uh, uh, memory map, which is dedicated to the keyboard. And to these two memory maps, we can connect a screen and uh, a keyboard. And the computer also features an ongoing refresh uh, cycle that uh, refreshes the physical screen from the contents of the uh, screen memory map. So uh, if you want to draw something on the uh, screen, you have to write into uh, the hack RAM. Now, let us take uh, a closer look at uh, the screen because you know, that's the, um, the focus of this uh, unit, graphics on uh, the hack uh, screen. So the screen is a grid that consists of uh, 256 rows of 512 pixels uh, each. And if I want to draw three pixels somewhere on the screen, well, in that case, I have to write the number seven or 111 somewhere in the um, screen memory map. And I've chosen some arbitrary address, 19,003, that presumably corresponds 
uh, to uh, what we see here on the screen. If we want to see some more pixels, let's say 16 pixels, then uh, we have to go to the same address and write the number uh, minus 1, which in binary is uh, 16 uh, ones, two, uh, two's complement. And uh, so, as you see, whenever you want to render something on the screen, the only way to do it is to write something into the RAM, into the uh, screen memory map, under program control. If you're writing in a machine language, you can do it directly. If you write in uh, Jack, then um, uh, you have to do it using uh, Jack commands. So uh, how can we do it using Jack commands? Well, first of all, we are lucky to have a class called uh, memory uh, as part of our uh, uh, operating system. And in the memory class, there are two functions called peek and poke, which enable me to do what I just described. I can use peek and poke in order to select certain addresses in the memory and either you know, fetch the number, which uh, the value, which is uh, lodged uh, into this uh, uh, address, or we can change this value by using uh, poke. So here are some examples. If I will write the code uh, let x equals uh, peak of this uh, address, 19,003, x will be set to 7, which is the decimal uh, value of uh, the binary 111. If alternatively I will say uh, poke in the same address minus 1, then this uh, word will, uh, uh, will not be uh, 1 anymore. I'm sorry, it will not be 7 anymore it will become minus 1, which is 16 ones in, uh, in binary. So I can control the RAM using these two operations. So that's one way of doing it. Let me show you another way. I can also draw pixels using the operating system. So for example, if um, I want to draw this uh, rectangle that you see here, which consists of, uh, let's see, two rows of three pixels each, then there are several ways of doing it. Uh, and I can do it using the uh, screen class um, uh, OS uh, uh, features. Uh, so let's see, we have draw pixel, draw line, draw rectangle. So we can, first of all, we have to decide or to make an assumption about the location of the desired uh, rectangle. So let us decide that these are the coordinates of the top left corner of this uh, image. So one thing that you can do is simply draw all the pixels that make up this uh, image. So we have six pixels, and we draw them one at a time. Another thing that we can do is we can use the draw line uh, routine in order to draw two lines of uh, three pixels uh, each. And uh, I can also draw this uh, image using the draw rectangle routine that uh, given the parameters that I supplied, will draw the same uh, image. So any one of these techniques here will do the same thing. Now, drawing regular figures like this is kind of uh, easy, isn't it? What about images that look like that? Well, this is an irregular uh, image, and we have no OS routine which is uh, specifically designed to, uh, to draw anything like that. And if we had such a routine, I could come up as a devil's advocate, I could come up uh, with another example that you cannot draw, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So at some point, uh, we have to deal with irregular figures. And one way to deal with these figures is to simply draw all the pixels, right? So I can you know, figure out uh, all the coordinates of all these pixels, and uh, for each one of these pixels, uh, draw it one at a time, and it turns out that in this particular example, I will end up using 75 different pixel drawing operations. Now, when you think about efficiency, you should never think about high level, where well, you can begin to think about high level, but at some point, you should always think about the low level. You know, how long will it actually take to, uh, uh, to draw this image on the ultimate host platform. Well, it turns out 
that every one of these pixels at the low level will require all the operations that you see here, none of which is trivial. Okay, so I've written it in pseudocode that uh, the operating system will have to, you know, implement all this, and uh, at some point we'll have to translate it into machine language and so on. And so when you look at this uh, batch of commands here, and if you're worried about efficiency, then the only two words that come to my mind are oi vei. Because, uh, you know, what we have here, I think, is something around at least 40 4.0 machine operations or machine cycles. And so the efficiency of this operation is 40 times 75, which is around 3,000 machine operations. A lot of work to draw this uh, little uh, uh, sprite on the screen. And think about animation where you have to draw this image, you know, thousands of times uh, within a loop. All right, so there must be a better way, and indeed there is a better way, uh, which we call uh, custom drawing. So, as you may have imagined, one thing that we can do is look at this image here and realize that we are actually looking at a bunch of numbers, right? Binary numbers that represent these uh, pixels. So we can render this image on the screen by simply writing a bunch of uh, numbers, uh, and these are the numbers in decimal, into uh, selected, carefully selected uh, addresses uh, in the RAM, and then we'll get exactly the same effect. And so in order to write these numbers, it turns out that I need 16 poke operations. And so the efficiency would be 16 poke operations. Now, poke is a highly optimized operation because it's a 16-bit operation, which is very natural to uh, the host uh, platform. And so uh, it can be implemented with, uh, I believe, uh, four uh, machine operations. So we have four times 16, which is 64 operations compared to the 3,000 that we had before. You know, significant uh, improvement uh, in terms of efficiency. All right, so uh, we can uh, continue to talk about custom drawing. And, uh, and now I'd like you to, to note that you know, we never draw these sprites in, uh, in isolation. They are always located in a certain location on the, um, on the host uh, screen. So let us not forget that we have to decide about the exact uh, addresses of, uh, of these values. And that's what I want to do in the next uh, few minutes to discuss the addressing uh, scheme. So first of all, recall that what we see here on the screen is uh, a rendition, an ongoing uh, rendition, which is refreshed all the time, of the uh, 8K screen memory map on the whole RAM. So let us focus only on the uh, uh, memory map and let us renumber the addresses of the memory map from 0 uh, to uh, 8K. And uh, let us uh, remember also the coordinates of the, uh, the top left uh, corner of the, uh, of the sprite. And uh, I have uh, filled in some uh, bits into the memory map that illustrate uh, what we actually see in the memory when we see this uh, sprite uh, on the screen. So let's see. The first row of the screen, which is 512 bits or pixels, is represented by the first 32 words of the RAM. And they're all zeros because you know, nothing is drawn there. And here we see the, um, the 32 bits, I'm, I'm sorry, the 32 words that represent the next uh, row, or the next 512 pixels, uh, if you will, uh, from which um, uh, the screen is, uh, is made. And then at some point, we'll get to the address where the uh, sprite actually uh, begins. And we see that we have a bunch of zeros and then a bunch of ones and um, a few more zeros. Well, you see, these are the bits that represent the pixels uh, that show the top
top hairline of the uh, avatar. Okay, so these ones are the, uh, the hairs that stand on uh, his or her uh, 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 top of the head. And then uh, the next uh, 32 words represent uh, the next uh, row of pixels in this image. And as you see, we have a bunch of zeros, then we have two ones, more zeros, two ones, more zeros. Well, these, these ones are the, uh, the edges of the head of the avatar, the hair that, uh, that the avatar has here, and uh, the lack of hair that he has in the middle is uh, the zeros. And it goes on and on. And at some point, you know, we get to the uh, bottom row of the, uh, of the avatar or this bitmap. And here we see the, uh, the bottom outline of the shoes of this uh, figure with a single zero pixel in the middle to separate uh, the two shoes uh, from each other. So um, what you see here is the mapping between the two-dimensional screen on the right-hand side and the uh, vector of 16-bit words from which the memory uh, of the host platform is made. All right, now, um, therefore, with that in mind, if we want to draw this uh, bitmap, we have to enter, as I said before, a bunch of uh, 16 uh, poke operations with carefully selected uh, addresses. Everything begins with a certain constant ADDR. And uh, ADDR is the first word that we want to draw uh, in the RAM. Now, if I want to turn this into absolute addressing, then I have to uh, uh, add to ADDR, first of all, the base address of the uh, uh, screen memory map in the host RAM, which is 16,384. And then I also have to add to it the uh, location uh, on the screen, you know, where I want to, uh, or sort of the computed location that corresponds to the point uh, where I want to start to draw this avatar on the screen. Once I will add up these two uh, constants, I will have the 16 operations that will end up drawing the avatar on this exact location on the screen. Now, uh, you may agree with me that uh, all this accounting is quite uh, 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 disturbing and uh, tedious. And therefore, you will be uh, uh, very happy, I think, to, uh, to realize that we provide a tool that uh, does all this automatically for you. We have a bitmap editor provided to you courtesy of uh, Golan Parashi, who is one of the students who took this course. And it's a very nice uh, little uh, JavaScript application, which is uh, made available to you. And um, all you have to do is invoke this application. It will start running in your browser. You will get to see a 16 by 16 uh, grid. You can then use your mouse to uh, turn on and off individual pixels. And then you hit uh, a button in the middle of the screen, and the application will automatically generate all the uh, poke commands which are necessary to render this, uh, uh, the image of your choice on the hack uh, uh, screen. So from this point onward, all you have to do is copy this uh, code from the browser and paste it into uh, your uh, Jack code, and voila. You know, you have uh, uh, customized code that controls your graphics uh, directly and bypassing uh, the operating system. All right, now, if you felt somewhere somewhat uh, lost about the, uh, detailed of the details of the host platform, then you're welcome to look again at project zero in which we discussed uh, the hack computer as well as input and output operations. Uh, but perhaps uh, you don't have to spend too much time on this because this little tool here really does most of the work for you. But of course, if you want to get more background, you're welcome uh, to do it. So I'd like to end with some uh, best practice advice on using uh, high performance uh, graphics. And my best advice is that in many cases, you don't use it at all. If all you want to do is uh, use some uh, simple graphics, 
Uh, you should use the uh, standard OS services. If you want to do something more fancy, you can also begin with uh, the standard OS services. And only if uh, something is not uh, working to your satisfaction, only then you can uh, opt to, uh, to do uh, the fancy tricks that we did in this unit. So um, uh, in particular, if you want to do high performance uh, graphics and animation, you can do what we uh, showed here. Um, and uh, if uh, you're willing to, uh, to settle for 16 by 16 uh, uh, pixels as uh, sprites, you're welcome to use the, uh, the bitmap editor. And uh, with all these, you know, you are free to, uh, to now uh, develop uh, fancy applications and uh, uh, hopefully the games that you come up with or whatever you want to do will be uh, uh, cool and, uh, and exciting. All right, so uh, this has been uh, the unit in which we talked about uh, high performance graphics. And in the next unit, we will finally discuss uh, project nine, which is uh, the JET program that you have to write uh, as the uh, capstone project of this module.